In this video, I'm going to show you the top four ways that you can store memory inside your N10's AI agents. I'm going to show you exactly how to set each one up, how you can use them, and finally, which one is the best for your use case. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele, and just over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so I lied. There's actually six ways that you can store memory inside your AI agents, but these two right here, there's actually no documentation, as in there's no way for us to know exactly how to set them up. I've tried everything. Uh, I couldn't find out how to do it. So let me know in the comment section if you figured it out, because that'll help. But here we have the simple memory, the MongoDB, Postgres and Redis. All right, so the first one here is called Simple Memory. Now, Simple Memory is the tool that we use to store memory for our AI agent conversations that is native within N10, which means that N10 owns it and we don't have to go outside of N10 to set it up. All I have to do is press Memory. And on the right-hand side, I can see the different options. I can just press this right here, Stores in N10 Memory, so no credentials required which is one of the pros of using this and leave this as this. So we have a session ID. Let's say a conversation has a number and by having this number, it remembers the previous text messages that we sent in that conversation. And then here it asks us for a context window length. What this means is how many past interactions does the model receive? Well, it's context, right? And so it's basically saying, hey, if I say, hello, how are you? And it says, I'm good, thanks. How are you? And then I responded again. It takes the past five messages that I've sent it to the AI agent as context, as memory. And so obviously this can increase. I don't know the maximum to this, but we can obviously do 10, 15 and so on. Let's leave it to five for now. And if I go here to the actual AI agent, I can chat to it. I can say, hey, how's the weather in London? What this will now do is it will talk to the brain to be able to uh, give us the answer. And so what it did now is that it actually stored this question inside the memory database. Obviously it says, I don't have real time access to the weather data and X, Y, Z. And now if I say, what did I just ask you? And what it does now is that it retrieves. So it goes to the memory and it says, hey, what did this dude just ask me? Let's extract the previous questions that he said. And in this case, it said, you asked about the weather in London, right? Now there's only one problem to this. The problem is if I refresh the actual chat session, it's sort of like I'm having a new conversation with someone else, I can go here. And I can ask this, what was my previous question? And so now what it will say is that you haven't asked any previous questions in this conversation. How can I say this to you today? So why does it say this is because when you have a new session ID, you have a new conversation. It's sort of like you're talking to John, you're having a conversation with him. Then you're talking to Mary and you're having a conversation with her, but now you're asking Mary, what did I just ask John? And obviously she's not gonna remember, which is a downside when you're using something like the simple memory, which is why we use it for testing mainly because it is very easy to set up. There's no real setup needed. Like we don't have to really connect it to anything else, which is why it's amazing because it's very, very easy to do it. It's perfect for testing because you can get the MVP out as soon as possible. MVP is just uh, the initial sort of draft of the AI agent just to test it. Then it's actually fine when you don't need long-term memory. So if it's something short-term then you could use the actual memory node. And the cons is, is not really reliable for production. The memory resets if you restart N10 and it doesn't scale well. And it's all because it wasn't built to, to scale. It was built, I assume, as a tool to actually test your AI agents and have it as a reference, which is great when you are testing, but not when you're doing something a bit more concrete. All right, so the second one here is called Redis. And you can find this by going to the memory. You can go here to Redis chat memory and you will find it here. All you have to do is go to credentials. You can press create a new credential and now we can start setting it up. To set this up, we have to go to a place called Upstash. You can search this up on Google. You can then go to the first link. You can then sign up for free. You can then see here that it uses Redis. And the same way that Hostinger hosts our N10 locally, this Upstash hosts Redis locally in a way. And all we have to do here is press start for free. You can continue with Google, choose your account, press continue. And once you get here, all we have to do is press create a database, name it whatever you want, so N10 testing ground. And I believe you can't put any spaces, which is fine. The primary region is the region around you. I will put London, UK. I believe that's the nearest around me. And then you can press next. You can leave this as free, so free plan. And then finally, you can press create. Once you have this here, you will see that this will now show up. And this is where we can start filling out the details right here. So the first one here is called a password. And the password is something that you can find right here on the token. So just copy this, go back to N10, and paste this here. Then for the user, leave this blank because it's only for password only auth. Then we have the host right here, which you can find by copying this right here, HTTPS, and bring it back here. 
you can paste this on your host and make sure that you remove the HTTPS colon slash slash. So you have this here. And the port itself is something that you can find up here. I believe that it is 6379. If yours is different, then make sure to update this. And then we want to turn this on as well, because you can see here that it says that the SSL is enabled. So we want to make sure that it matches from N10 to here. And then we can name this. So make the alcalde and you can press save. And now what we can do here is we can leave this as chat trigger node because we're connecting this to the actual trigger, which is us chatting to the AI agent. Then leave this as zero. So the session doesn't expire. So you can always use this. And in context window length is the exact same thing as the previous one. It's how many conversation do you want this to pull from when it's giving you the answer. And so in this case, five is fine. If you go here, I can put open chat and I can say, hey, how's football in the US? And by asking it this question, what it will do is that it will obviously use the AI, but it will store the Redis chat memory. If we go right here, we can find it under the data browser. And you can see right here that now we have the actual question from the human, hey, how's football in the US? And then we have the AI, so type AI because that's the answer that he gave us with the actual answer that he gave us back. As you can see here, the answer that we got is this right here. Now, I typically like this as well because it is very powerful and we can store a lot of conversations. And also it is very, very fast in doing it because as you can see here, it actually stored the information really, really fast. Let me show you again. I can say, hey there. It's lightning speed, right? Which is very, very good, especially when we're doing something uh, more scalable, like um, I guess voice agents. And it's great if you have a voice agent where you need something really, really quick to be stored or to be retrieved. So that's great. And it's also ideal for agents needing to install recall because there are some agents inside of N10 that you're going to build or even outside, they're going to be needing the ability to recall information, to extract information from somewhere. And then it's great for real-time conversational agents because it's actually very, very fast at pulling in information. Now, the only cons with this is that the memory is temporary unless you turn a setting on. It does require a separate Redis server because it is self-hosted and then it's not ideal for long and complex memory storage. And so here we ideally want to use this for things like voice agents or for other conversational agents that need quick responses. Um, this is great. And you can also see the actual responses here all at once. You will see here as for the human, but also for the AI as well. And now if I actually get a new session right here and I can say, Hey there, what's up? If I actually spell it right, it actually stores the information. And if I go here, I can now see that we have a new session ID, so a new conversation saying, hey there, what's up? And then the actual response. So you get to see a log of all the conversations that you've had so far, unlike the first node where we'd actually don't keep anything in the long run, right? This right here keeps it there. All right, the third one here is called Postgres. All we have to do is go to memory and we have to go to Postgres chat memory here and it stores the chat history inside a Postgres table. And I'll explain to you exactly what that is. But if I go here to credentials, I can press create a new credential. So it's actually connecting our N10 to Postgres. And for us to actually have a table, we have to go to a software called Superbase. Now, if you've watched a few rack videos, you know that I use Superbase a lot to be able to store information for us to retrieve the information later on. And so in this case, we can go to start a project, make an account, right? I already made an account, but in this case, you can go up here. You can have a new organization as you're making an account. And then I can put here N10 testing ground. Leave this as personal, free, create an organization. You can wait a few seconds until it gives you a screen with the confirmation. You can name this, uh, whatever, just a very simple name, Mikeller's company and uh, Europe is fine. And now for the actual password, type a password that you're going to remember, because we're going to use this in just a minute. So I'm going to use my password. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create a new project. And once you create a new project, make sure that we have the project status live. And now you want to go to connect right here. You want to go right here. Turn this to Postgres and then make sure this is transaction pooler. So once we have this here, now we can start viewing the parameters and start filling out the connection on N10 connected to this. Now, if you're already lost, don't worry. We're just setting up basically the credentials, the password, the username, all that stuff that we need to be able for the AI agent to store data. Okay. Now, if I go here, you can see that I need a host, database, user, password, max number of connections, ignore SSL, SSL, port, and that's it. So we're going to start by filling out the host. Copy this and paste it back here, host. Then we can go to port 6543. Go all the way down and fill this out, port. Then we have the database Postgres, which is the one that I see there already. Then the user, copy this and go up here and you can paste this to user. And the password is the one that I told you to remember from the previous step. So I can go here and put my password from before. 
and leave everything else as is, it's all good. You can name it. So Michele connection. When I press save, the connection will be successful. If it doesn't show success here, then make sure that all the fields right here correlate with the ones that you see here. We can leave everything the same. Again, we have the chat trigger node because that is the thing that we use to chat to the AI agent. Then we have a new table, which will be made, which will be called anytime chat histories. So let me actually show you that if I change the name, this will be the name of the actual table. And context window length would be the amount of messages that it remembers as the conversation goes. And if I go here and I pull this up, I can then start talking to it. I can say, hey, how's it going? What it will do is it will now store the conversation inside the memory. So if I go here to the super base, I can zoom out. And if I go to table editor right here, I should be able to see the new table being made, which is anytime chat history. And this is what it shows. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Which is the one that we see here. And so that way, it's very similar to the previous one, but now we will have a full table with a session ID of the actual conversation, the messages, and all the different things that we will need as previous context or as memory for it to use when giving us the answers the next time. So for example, now I can say, what did I ask? What it will do is it will go down inside the actual table. It will pull the information from here and then it will give us back the answer, which is you asked, hey, how's it going? Now, the pros itself is that it is very stable plus reliable for production, which is why I like to use this over the others. And it is great if you're already using Postgres with NTN and it handles structured memory very, very well. The cons of this is that it is a bit slower than Redis. And when we're talking slower, I don't actually mean a few seconds slower, right? It's milliseconds. But at the same time, when you have a conversational agent or something else, speed is very, very important. It does also require some schema planning, which is some more advanced stuff. And it has more of a setup compared to a simple memory because a simple memory doesn't really need any setup. In this case, we have to do credentials here, credentials there, table here and table there, right? Which is a bit more of a tedious process. All right, and the last one here is called MongoDB memory. Now you can find it right here. If I go to memory, I can then zoom in and I can find it right here. And to connect it, you have to go to credentials. You can press create a new credential. And just like the other ones, we have to put different series of information. So firstly, I can go to MongoDB. I can go inside here. You can sign up with Google or your email and so on. Choose your account, press continue, and you'll be redirected to this page. Press I accept, submit, and you'll have welcome to MongoDB Atlas. And Atlas is the company that basically owns everything. Uh, press skip personalization here, a button that you typically don't see. Um, and now you'll have this here. So we're gonna go to free plan, name this whatever you want. So Michele, test, AWS, the region is a region near you. Paris is fine. And I can press create deployment on the bottom right here. And this will now create the deployment for the actual project here. And now you wanna press close. Now we have to do a few things to be able to connect it. So the first thing we want to do is go to database and network access. And you want to go to IP access list, create an IP address, go here. And you wanna press allow access from anywhere. Just press confirm. You will now see that this is pending. So just wait until it's both active right here and right here. As you can see now, this one's active. And we have to go here to database users. You can press add a new database user. Now we have a username and password. Just make sure you remember this for the next steps. I can put Michele tests or actually Michele and it's in. And I can put my password, there we go. Right here we can put, this will be used to retrieve information for a agent. And now if we go to add built-in role, I can go here and I can put read and write to any database and I can leave everything the same and press add a user. And now we want to make the actual database. When you go to clusters here, you then have to wait for the thing to actually load. So this is loading your sample data set. All right, once this is green right here, you can press connect and make sure you go to drivers and you wanna go down to here and just copy this right here, this URL and go back to N10. Make sure you turn this from values to connection string and just paste the actual thing. Now make sure that right here under the actual password, you take this out and you put the password that you used as a password for the username and password that we made before. Now that you have this, you wanna go back here and you wanna make sure that you copy the actual, it's pressed on. You wanna go here to browse collections. You wanna go to create a new database. You wanna go to create a new database right here and name it Michele test and just copy this here. You can also put a uh, test here. So test and it's as a collection name, press create. And now this will create the actual table. And with that name that you have, which is everything before the full stop, you can go here and you can put the database name. And I can put my connection name as well. Okay, test. I can press save. And this will now connect my MongoDB to any 10. So if I go here, I can leave this as any 10 chat histories. The database name will be my database name. The context window length, this would also be five, so it's fine. And now if I go here to the chat trigger node, I can say, hey there, how's or how do you make burgers? 
There you go. What this will now do is it will actually store the information in our database. If I go here, I can see that under test and attend, I can refresh and I should be able to see the actual conversation right here. And attend chat histories. You can see here, if I go to messages, if I go to object, here I can see the human message, which is my message. Hey there, how do you make burgers? And the AI message. So AI, which is, hey, making burgers is pretty straightforward and fun. Here's a basic X, Y, Z. It actually gave me the full ingredients here. Yeah, give me the full thing. Awesome. Now the pros of using MongoDB is that you can store large amounts of memory without slowing you down. So my agency was actually working with a software and they were using MongoDB as a way to store all the users that they had within their software in one database. Why? Is because it's more scalable in the long run. It is very flexible. It's good for messy or growing data. And it works well for complex AI agents that need a lot of context. Now the cons are, it requires a separate database to set up. It's slightly more complex to manage when it comes to the long run. And it's slower than Redis for instant recall. Redis again is the one here that we used that was really, really fast. And so you would just use MongoDB if you have a bit more of a complex setup and you wanna store more information there. All right, and you can find the link to the full resource right here in the second link down below. In my free school community, you can go to the classroom section, templates vault, and right here, you'll be able to see the latest video, which is four ways an AI agent stores memory, and you can download it. And if you apply and you get in, you also get access to two weekly calls on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we have a classroom full of different courses, whether you're more N10, whether you wanna get a general feel of automations in general, start your AI agency, all the resources from all the YouTube videos that I've done, weekly recordings to all the calls that we've had so far, and also over $20,000 in discounts. And a community of over 4,200 people of absolute legends growing and building with AI. Now, the only disclaimer is that not everybody gets in, so please put some thoughts into your answers, and I'll see you on the inside. And if you are a nine to five working professional who's making at least 5K a month, and you wanna start your AI agency to scale to 10 and even 40K a month, then check out the first thing down below. And if you want to dive deeper into AI agents, then check out this video up here, where I give you the full masterclass on exactly how to prompt your AI agents to make them 10 times smarter and more scalable. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.